All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you could come together. Uh, we're ready to begin the uh, walking tour of the upper part of the Grand Concourse. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome you all here, and uh, we're here on the corner of uh, the Grand Concourse and Fordham Road. Uh, it's a very important intersection for many, many reasons. Uh, this is really today the center of the most important and the busiest uh, shopping district in the Bronx. Uh, it is the fifth largest shopping district in New York City. Uh, it is so busy and uh, attracts so many people for seven days out of the week that if any business goes uh, it closes, almost immediately it is uh, taken by someplace else because the amount of traffic that goes on place here uh, covers that. Now, what do you find here uh, on this intersection? Well, right across the street, uh, you have a building that was built in the early 1930s. It is called the Wagner Building. It is an office building, and you can see it is uh, uh, the architecture is the um, Art Deco style of architecture of the time. Now, Art Deco was uh, actually started in Paris in 1925 at an exhibition uh, from which we get its name, Art Decoratif. Uh, the uh, you will notice that the thrust of your eye goes upward. Uh, the idea of Art Deco is to try to express the machine age. And so you have um, uh, very much ab abstract designs. Uh, some Art Deco uh, buildings have the accent horizontal, some have it vertical. Here it's vertical. When it goes up to the top, you see how the uh, 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 the uh, decoration turns on one side to the other and then also begins and continues upward. Um, and we will see that uh, throughout uh, this, this tour. Uh, further down, uh, at uh, just south of 188th Street, uh, you find a massive uh, theater, the Lowe's Paradise Theater, which was built in 1929 by the uh, Lowe's Corporation for a cost of $4 million. That's $4,1929. Um, it, sa it, it seated 4,000 people. And uh, it was an atmospheric theater. That is the idea you would enter the theater and as you go further and further in the, into the theater, you would be lifted away from your everyday humdrum existence into uh, a fabulous uh, other world, uh, completely different from your own experience. And it is built inside the theater itself. The auditorium theater is built like a Baroque Italian garden. Uh, in fact, uh, when it opened, uh, you could... Uh, the ceiling was painted as a, um, uh, a night sky with little pinpoint lights to simulate uh, stars and drifting just below the ceiling were genuine real clouds. That was uh, generated by a cloud machine that was located just above the ceiling. Um, in the uh, bad days for uh, uh, for motion pictures, when the uh, uh, the audience for motion pictures declined, uh, the theater was twinned, then triplexed, then quadruplexed. Uh, and by the the late 18 uh, not, by the late 1980s, early 1990s, the man who owned it wanted to. Uh, uh, tear down the inside and make it a commercial uh, space because of all of the shops that are around here. Huge uproar from the people of the Bronx. How dare you? Don't you dare touch it. Uh, finally, it has been restored, and in December of 2005, it reopened and is now uh, being used for live shows. Uh, right across the way over here, uh, you see a building that is now called 2 Fordham Square. Uh, that was actually uh, one of the oldest buildings on this corner. Uh, that building uh, was here in the early 1920s and was originally a Wertheimer's department store. That's how it was built. And then it was uh, taken over uh, 
by the Adams Flanagan Company, which had a uh, uh, a store at the hub at uh, at Third uh, Avenue and 149th Street, and this became Adams Wertheimer. Uh, with the coming of the Great Depression, Adams Wertheimer went out of business, and a new uh, company took it over, Alexander's. Uh, George Farkas uh, uh, started Alexander's at the hub, uh, and then he got this building, and he made it into Alexander's department store, which opened up in August of 1934, uh, and with huge crowds of people just before Labor Day. Uh, it was so successful that this store had, in the 1930s, the largest number of sales per square foot of any department store in the nation. This became the headquarters of Alexander's department store until it opened up the store uh, that was down at 59th Street. Uh, then it moved the, uh, the headquarters down there. But this was so successful that in 1938, they extended it. And you can see, for instance, uh, a, uh, a line uh, just uh, to the right of the horizontal glass block window uh, uh, that shows you the addition that was made. And a further addition was made even later. Uh, but when they made the addition, which is in 1938, and they made the further addition in 1959 to 61, when they made that first addition, they added the square footage and so they lost the title of having more sales per square foot. <laughs> uh, but this is an extremely successful one. As a matter of fact, that sign that uh, on the roof, uh, the uh, structure was actually put up there by Alexander's and originally said, uh, and with its original uh, slogan, Uptown, it's Alexander's. Uh, by the 1970s, Alexander's took a look at its balance and found out that while it was still solvent, it was making more money from the real estate that it owned than from its retail sales. So they decided to close all of the Alexander's department stores and go into uh, into real estate and only into real estate. This store was uh, taken over by a New England-based uh, department store, Caldors, but uh, soon after that, Caldors went bankrupt and this remained closed. Well, there was a man by the name of James Houlihan who grew up in one of those apartment houses right over there on the same block who was very fond of Alexander's. Uh, he moved to Westchester County, made a fortune uh, as a real estate broker in Westchester County. And he came down here and he said, I've got to reopen this thing. So he redid the entire interior, named the building 2 Fordham Square, placed the entrance right over there where it says 2501. Uh, instead of the main entrance, which was at the children's place, uh, put in different stores, got people who put in different stores uh, at the base, offices above, and the City University of New York took a lot of space for CUNY on the Concourse, which is uh, uh, part of its adult education program, uh, which is a consortium of the uh, of members of the uh, uh, of the City University system. Uh, so this is now an act, very active area. Uh, this building just behind me uh, is uh, what is called a taxpayer. Uh, it's a two-story taxpayer, and the reason why it's called a taxpayer is that. Uh, uh, real estate developers uh, wanting to know what the heck to do with a piece of empty real estate uh, uh, would temporarily, they thought, uh, build a small building that would have shops in it and thus they would have some income uh, that would at least pay the taxes. That's why it's called the taxpayer. And usually these turn out to be so successful they never tore them down. Uh, this, believe it or not, has a name. This is the Ryan Building, <laughs> uh, though you never find it anywhere. But that's the, the that's the name of that. Uh, now, the Grand Concourse that you find over here. Uh, this is a comparatively recent addition to the streets of the Bronx. We have streets in the Bronx that go back to colonial days. But the Grand Concourse itself was uh, an idea of an immigrant who was a civil engineer, which of course meant that he was very polite. Uh, uh, the civil engineer by the name of Louis Rissi, 
Uh, he saw this ridge 